bring uh, greetings from all our brethren from West African countries. We are waiting for mission and they send their great regards unto you. Amen. Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. In your presence, I am content. Verse 1 
talk about when you begin to affiliate and have affinity with God, what happens to you in book of Psalm 91, verse number one, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Praise God. Hallelujah. And the body that dwells in God's presence in the secret place of his Most High shall abide under the shadows. Total overshadowed by the Almighty. Dwelling in God's presence. And look at Psalm 31, verse 20. Psalm 31, verse 20. Thou shalt hide them in the secret of thy presence from the pride of man. Thou shalt keep them secretly in a pavilion from the strife of tongues. The pride of man, all the boastings of man cannot thrive when you are in God's presence. The hatred of men, their walking thoughts, shall not be able to have effect on you when you are in God's presence. Dwelling in God's presence. And the other day, the word of God said, Proverbs we'll chapter 18, verse 10, that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runs into the name of the Lord, and they are. Your safety is only in God's presence. In God's presence. Some years back in the 90s, that should be precise, 1998, one scripture entered into me and fired into my life. I got a call from that scripture. While fasting, doing some three days fasting, the last day is supposed to be Easter Sunday. And I was worried that God has not heard me. And God has not answered me. And as God told me to study, I was studying the book of Isaiah 49. And this verse 15 jumped out of the scripture and I ate that word that day. And it has never been the same again. Psalm 49 verse 15. Isaiah 49 verse 15. He said, can a woman forget her sucking child? That she will not give compassion on the son of her womb. Yet they may forget. Yet they will not forget you. He said, Behold, I'm giving you on the backs of my heart, and your words are continually before me. That was what the day I realized what it means to be in God's presence continually, not just in the church. No, most of us experience God's presence in the church. No, it's not only the church. Your words are continually before me. That means you are always in my presence. Continually. That is what will deliver you from, from all manner of destructions. The world is getting more wicked today. A lot of people are looking for who they will use to make rituals. A lot of fallen people are everywhere. Everyone is trying to grab one thing or the other. The system of the world is running very fast. But it will take God's presence for you to be free from all this manner of evil that we are exposed to in this end time. Sometimes in the 90s, I was struggling. And I went to Ojota to go to the going to Ojota. And as I went there, I saw a young lady she had paid the people that were loading the bus and they were counting her money. And I was standing right behind her and I asked the young man that was collecting money, how much is on the child? And he told me, as soon as the lady heard my voice, voice, not my face, she turned back, looked at my, my eye. I go to eyeball, I looked at her. The man told me the amount. And he was expecting me to pay. So it was less concerned with the money he was holding. The lady grabbed the money from the man. Ah! The man said, What's up? He said, I'm not traveling again with this boss. Praise God. The man said, What's going on? The lady said, I am not traveling again with this boss. They were 
were dragging the lady, she ran, she carried her bag on top of the bus. She was running towards the new carriage, you know what you done very well. They were running after her. What is happening? What happened, madam? She was shouting, I am not traveling with this bus again. I am not traveling with this bus again. Leave me alone. Praise God. When they came to me, they asked me, God, do you know that lady? What is happening? I said, are you deaf? Didn't you hear her? That she will not travel with this bus with me. I said, two of us cannot enter this bus. If she dares it, she will see the. She knows the repercussion. That's why she ran ahead. And they were asking me, who are you? I said, who am I? Who I am does not matter. What matters is that the lady there, one of us must travel in the bus, and it's me. The superior power must be in the bus. She cannot be in that bus. A lot of destructions are everywhere. It takes God's presence for you to be free and be totally delivered. I command today that the presence of God shall envelop you as you go out and come in, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. The powers of darkness cannot operate in the presence of God. Remember, that light shines in darkness and in darkness. Praise the Lord. Dwelling in God's presence. Dwelling in God's presence. Hallelujah. It is God's presence that differentiates the children of God from the children of the world. It's the presence of God. God's presence makes all the difference that you are looking at for. By all means, with all that gettings, make sure you get God's presence. Pay the sacrifice. It's worth it. Praise God. Praise the Lord. In the book of Exodus chapter 33, verse 13, look at what Moses said. Exodus 33, verse 13. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now the way that I might know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight. And consider that this nation is thy people. And he says, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with, us, with, with, with me, carry us not up hence. Praise God. Moses told God, Cancel this trip if your presence is not going with us. I cannot make the trip. Just consider it cancelled. If you cannot honor us with your presence, forget it. And I'm here to tell you something. Any trip that God has not sanctioned, please don't ever embark on such a trip. It's disastrous. God's presence is all you need. When you carry God's presence, no door shall be blocked against you. It's not possible. Because Psalm 24 will come to me. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be with the ye everlasting doors. There's no door that can shut against God. So when you carry God's presence, you carry God, and no man can shut against you. It's not possible. Unmedited favor follows those that carry God's presence. Even if you don't like the man, you must bow to his door. When you carry God's presence, there is no God that is permitted to shout against you. Hallelujah. God's presence. Somebody say God's presence. Hallelujah. Look at what David says. Very instructive. David was a man that enjoyed God's presence so much that he never desired to lose or miss God's presence one second in his life. In the book of Psalm 51, verse 10, when he was on that way, challenges after his sin against God, he now prayed ahead because he understood what will happen to him. Psalm 51, verse 10, he said, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Yes, 
restore unto me the joy of my salvation and upon me with that faith, with that, with that free spirit. Praise God. David cried when he saw that sin has come to take him away from God's presence. He cried. Cast me not away from your presence, O oh God. Take me But turn their backs 
before their enemies because they were accursed. Neither will I be with you anymore except you destroy the accursed from among you. The accursed made the children of, 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 of Israel not to carry God's presence again. The God's presence in their life departed as a result of sin. So when we commit sins, we pursue God's presence far away from us. The only enemy of God's presence in our life is sin. So we have to avoid sin if we want to permanently retain God's presence. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Samson was a good example also in the book of Judges chapter 16. Samson was a man that was carrying God's presence. But the moment Samson sinned, Samson lost the presence of God in his life. And problems started upon the life of Samson that led to his destruction. In the book of Judges chapter 16 verse 20 because the presence of God left him. Judges 16 20 and she said the Philistines be upon his Samson and they awoke out of his sleep and said I will go out as I other times before and shake myself and they wish not that the Lord was departed from him. Praise God. The Spirit of God has departed from him when he sinned. And now he became just like every other man. He became ordinary. Because what makes the difference in the life of Samson, the strength was happening. And enjoying all this while and was the presence of God. So when he sinned against God, the, the presence left him and he was captured just like a rat. And when he came, he said, let me go and check myself. And I will win the power of God that I've been winning before. But nothing happened. Why? The presence of God has left him because of sin. So that is exactly what happened to us when we commit sins. Hallelujah. Praise be the Lord. Hallelujah. And when God's presence departs, evil spirit will take over. I want to tell you something. Your body is a vacuum. And you see, there's no way it can remain open like that or empty. Is it that it's being occupied by the Spirit of God or it's being occupied by the Spirit of Satan? So we should be very careful. If you leave your body, that the Spirit of God leaves your body, the Spirit of Satan will enter. There's no way the Spirit of God can leave you and you will remain the same. No. There must, your body must be occupied. So look at what happened to Saul, King Saul. In the word of God, in the book of 16, 1 Samuel 16. We must make sure that we don't drive the Spirit of God away from us by sin because it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. 16 of the book of 1 Samuel, I will read from verse 14. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. The moment the Spirit of God left Saul, Saul became possessed. He was totally possessed. By evil spirits and now demanded for deliverance. That was why they brought David. David was conducting deliverance for him. And even the same spirit wanted to kill David. But he could not kill David. When he threw javelin on him, he could not kill David. Why? The spirit of God was upon him. Praise God. I want to advise you, it's dangerous to walk without the spirit of God. Hallelujah. It's so dangerous to walk without the Spirit of God. A few days ago, I was somewhere in Togo and we are having deliverance. And in the course of deliverance, I met a, 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 a woman. The woman was, was possessed. And when the Spirit began to speak in her, I asked the Spirit, how long have you been in this body? And the Spirit told me 27 years that they have been in that body for 27 years. And I told the Spirit, How many are you? He said, We are many. I said, Well, even if you are as many as Legion in the book of Mark chapter 5, you must come out. When the Spirit was coming out, and I was calling the Spirit, we were coming out. If you look at the woman's face, 
There was something she was wearing. All these fancy things that women wear in their hands, those things are dangerous. The moment I tried to touch that thing, that was when the anchor came. And the spirit said, you can't remove it. It took four men to help the woman down before we were able to remove that thing from the woman's hand. Now, the face changed. And she looked at me and said, you, I'm going to, I said, shut up. You can't do me anything. They don't burn, they don't burn your papa well to do anything unto me. And the child of God, I'm, 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 a, I'm a servant of God. It has to close my mouth to me. The spirit has to shut down and until all of them were cast out. You think there are no powers? The only thing that can sustain you in this wicked world, and after the deliverance, the woman, the woman herself knew that it was not her that manifested. A new heart came. I saw her before the service, during the service. I saw her again after the service. You see that this is a new person in time. She did not know what was in her. For 27 years, they have been using her inside her body. When you don't have the Spirit of God, you open the door for Satanic Spirit to enter. And when they want to enter, they will not enter alone. No. They will come with their children, with their grandchildren, with their in laws, with their cousins, with their nephews. They don't, if the devil wants to come, not they come alone. And they say, let us come and hold this body that nobody can pursue us out today. So grace for the Spirit of God and make sure you don't lose the glory. You don't come short of glory of God for the Spirit of God to leave you. That's why they may cry. Cast me not away from your presence. Because you understood the power of Satan when the Spirit of God is not there. But when the Spirit of God is there, there is total protection. Ask our Father Job, he will tell you. And Satan also testified over Job. In the book of Job chapter 1 verse 10, as we are closing this service this morning, Job chapter 1 verse 10, you will see high profile protection over God's people because of God's presence. Job chapter 1 verse 10, Has thou, has not thou made an edge about him, and about his house, and about all that he had, on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and the substance is increased in the land. Praise God. Hallelujah. Devil was one telling God, You bless you. And see, all this man have been trying to get across to him. I could not get across to him. You protect him. You build an hedge around him that nobody can attack him. He has not been done on the going attack. And that is to confirm what the word of God said in the book of Psalm 34, verse 7. That the angels of God encamp round about them that fear God and they deliver them. That will be your portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, be your feet right now this morning as you pray for yourself this morning. Just be your feet. And I want you to pray. Uh, I don't know whether God's presence is still with you. But if you are not having God's presence with you, then you need to call, you need to, re you need to renew your covenant with God because you can't do without it. And ask God, please, I renew my covenant with you. I need your presence. Lord, encamp my, my life around the presence. Over my business. If your business is not protected, it will be attacked. Oh Lord, encamp my business around with your protection. Over your children, over your husband, over your wife. Pray for protection. Over your parents, children pray that God should protect and preserve your presence. Lord, your presence. Mambo shakapa skoma siti buna. Yekete bosita likadaba suta laba. Yeni apapa siti geleba. Yekatalaba siti gebodi manuka. Your presence, oh Lord. I pray for your presence. Malu. Yekatalaba siti gebodi manuka taba. Yebasata ba siti gebodi siti gebodi manuka taba. Yekatalaba siti gebodi manuka taba.
If you need Jesus in your life, because that's the beginning of God's presence. The moment you get born again, a dispensation of the Holy Spirit is given upon you, and you carry the presence of the Holy Spirit, and you begin to walk with Him, except you do not go contrary to the will of God, because it's a gentle spirit you can quit. But as long as you're a child of God, you are carrying the Holy Spirit. I want you today, if you have not met to Christ, you are not having the Spirit of God. I want you to pray this morning and ask God for forgiveness of sins. Anywhere you have seen and come short of glory of God, ask God for forgiveness of sins. This morning is going to forgive you. Thank you, Jesus. Live and so Lord, no, please, O oh Lord. Let all these sins as be confessed this morning, O oh Lord. Let them be good, Lord. Forgive me and pardon, O oh Lord. Thank you, Lord, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus, O oh Lord, for forgiving our sins. Blessed be the Holy Name. Thank you for those sins, for being forgiven. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. If you need Jesus in your life, you say this prayer of faith after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe you died for me on the cross of Calvary. And on the third day, you rose again that I might be justified. Thank you, Lord, for saving me from Satan to serve the living God. For today, I believe I'm born again. I'm a child of God. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up these ones that have received you today as their personal Lord and Savior. I pray, O oh Lord, that the day you come, they shall not be found wanting. I pray that, Holy Spirit, that you take total possession of them, Lord. And every evil spirit that has not occupied your Lord, their temple this morning, I give you quick notice to go and come back no more in the name of Jesus. And I pray every life in this house and those that are hearing globally with the blood of Jesus Christ, pray for God's presence to inhabit. In every life to the glory of God in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for answer prayers. In Jesus' most powerful name, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated this morning.